Now the second part, when we think about all of our licensing, you know, so this is we're, we're, this in the next couple of slides, this is where the big, you know, is a place where a lot of people are mislicensed. Uh, you know, the first part is you, you, you pay for the server OS. There's you know, ways to do it with data center. You can buy cores. Uh, you can buy those through different places. Agile IT, we do licensing for this ourselves through a subscription model that, that uh, Microsoft allows us to do it. So you could get, you could get it from us and now you, you, you've done your data center, your VMs, but people that use those servers need a client access license. This is Microsoft's way of saying you have the server, but people who access it, that's a cost. They're always paired together. All right. Unless it's some VM that nobody logs into to background processor and only the admin gets into it, then that's different. But most cases we're talking about here, line of business applications, file servers, those kinds of things, they need a Windows Cal. One Windows Cal for your user can access any of those Windows Server OSs in your environment. So it's not, you know, so it's one Cal for the user and all the servers. SQL Cal, on the other hand, uh, is the place that's the big tricky part. The person that's using SQL also has to have a license. And I'll talk about that a little bit more here. So let's take this example. And this is all, this example is gonna to extend to what we do in Azure as well. So in this example, we have a happy user, logs in, local AD, Azure AD, username and password, doesn't matter how they actually log into the app. Oh, it, we, you know, when they log into this application, we use their username and password. Do we need a cow? Sure, you, you know, you betcha, because it's running a Windows Server. So that person needs a cow, right? So, and, you know, so they have to have a cow. And, the, and then the application itself, let's say it's IS, web-based application, and it's using a connection string stored in an encrypted way, I would hope, or integrated off. They're like, you know, we have this one account that the app pool runs under, and that's what connects to the SQL database. And so from that perspective, you know, we only have one, li you know, one license that we, that we use. So in this case, the user here with the Windows account, and here with the, with the connection string, the database, we have one SQL user. Again, could have been an Apple, you know, with integrated auth, could be connected, it doesn't matter. And in your database, you might only have one SQL user in there. Completely valid, good architecture, um, which is fine, but it is bad from a licensing. The reason that is, is because even though the SQL user we have here in the happy little beard and orange background, that person doesn't actually have a SQL login on the SQL server, it doesn't matter. They are benefiting from the SQL database because they use the application and the application is that. This is very, very common. What they should have is those users, even though they don't, they can't log into SQL, we're not gonna create an account in there, they, that person needs to have a Windows Cal and a SQL Cal. The, the, the database string integrated off also needs to have that. So if you have 100 people using your web application today, go into your SQL Server and you don't have 100 SQL Cal's, you know, 100 plus one for the you know, connection string, uh, you're, mis you're mislicensed. So with that, this is also part of your cost. You might say, well, what do I do now? Well, you know, I want to migrate to Azure because one of the benefits of this is that when you do licensing, and this excludes hybrid benefits, it excludes BYOL, which is bring your own license. That's where you you installed SQL Server on the OS. You know, it could be Windows OS, even could be a Linux OS. You know, it's a little you know, other interesting thing. But if they're now using SQL, if you build, you know, do BYOL, a whole nother topic. But if you move your database, and this VM was running in Azure, the SQL you know, server VM, it's running either the Azure SQL service or it's running uh, a, a image that started with uh, the, the OS with SQL included. You can do it afterwards and, and update it. Anyway, uh, if it's running inside of Azure, it takes care of the OS cost and it takes care of the Cal cost. So I won't go too much into that. 